Hi, I am Sarah Rodman, the TV editor here at the Los Angeles Times. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I am so excited to have on our red couch today the funny, smart, talented, gorgeous Jackie Hoffman. Oh, gorgeous. As you know her, Mamacita from Feud, making us all laugh and cry at the same time. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. And I laugh and cry at the same time <laughs> all the time. <laughs> So how much research did you, I can't believe this woman was real, A, she was, and how a, much research real, did you do? B, not much. <laughs> there wasn't much out there, um, and uh, what little was out there that was sent to me and that I Googled was uh, from a book that Joan Crawford wrote called My Way of Life, mm -hmm. and when I first came into my own as in I love to hang around gays and cool people in my 20s, I purchased a copy of My Way of Life. So I knew about Mama Sita then. I read about her when I was in my 20s. My favorite thing about that whole explanation of her is that she had heard people calling people Mama Sita in Portugal. Joan did, yes. But this woman was German. And German. that's Anna Spanish. Marie <laughs> and she had nine children. She had nine, nine! Children. <laughs> but she gave all that up. Although, were they grown well, by the time? she didn't give them up. But they were grown by the they time were, she they were grown. John. Yes, yes. And I, uh, I recently, a gentleman uh, uh, who I met, uh, uh, I met him and he uh, runs a, on Facebook a uh, page called The Concluding Chapter of Crawford, and he had yet more information about Mama Sita. So it's like I said, I always do my research after a series concludes. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw pictures of her that I had not seen before. He has a copy of the resignation letter that she wrote to Joan, and I found out she didn't speak English. She only spoke German. Wow. And so there was a lot of pantomime. I remember reading that Joan was very excited that she was able to develop yes. her pantomime, yeah, pantomime skills. She'd throw stuff at her, and that's how <laughs> she'd let her know. And I love that you sent this email. Tell people about the email that you sent to Jessica Lang oh when you got the part. Oh, my gosh. Bar. Yes. When before, I knew I was just going to be thrust onto the set with her, and I had never met her before, and it, it's Jessica Lang. Yes. And, you know, I tend to gush when I mean, I didn't want it to be like, which I did when Helen Hunt directed episode seven. And when I met Helen Hunt, I, 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 uh, <laughs> sessions, you're like good and you're like naked, you know, so I didn't want to take. So I emailed Jessica the night before and I was like, hi, I'm looking forward to working with you and have you abuse me and throw shit at me. And then. Um, so it, it it warmed us up, and then the first day of shooting, she 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 hugged me. Thank you for your letter. <laughs> That's good. And I guess that was true. She threw things at her. Joan Crawford threw things at this woman, apparently. Correct. Apparently, she did leave, according to her children. She left because she got tired of having thrown things at her. <laughs> and I don't know if Ryan knew that, because we were all sitting on set one day, and... Um, I said, yeah, I, I read that she got tired of having stuff thrown at her. And Ryan went, really? <laughs> and you saw that American horror story glint, you know, light up, really? And I'm like, uh-oh. So did you get story credit on that show? Oh, that God, episode? No. no, I was Darn. just lucky I got there through episode eight. They kept threatening me. No, we're giving her an arc. I said, I don't want an arc. I want eight episodes. <laughs> Let's be realistic. Let's talk about this cast for a minute. because. Oh, uh, what did you even do when you started hearing these names? <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? You just, you can't even, you know. Yes. Huge star, huge star, huge star, huge star. Me. On your way to being a huge uh, star. With uh, amazing credits. And people also know you from Difficult People mm -hmm. and from Gilmore Girls, which must have been super fun to be a part of. That was fun. And they gave me a lip gloss. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was ridiculous. I, I couldn't believe it. And I couldn't, I couldn't take people's accomplishments too seriously. I'm like, don't think of these people as, you know, right. don't, Francis Farmer. don't like, you know, I know I can't, I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't because then I would, I'd be so intimidated. I wouldn't be able to do anything. Mm -hmm. So it had to be like, all right, we're colleagues. <laughs> we're all plying our craft. We're all totally the same. Yeah. And then of course I had those moments. Okay. And Francis, <laughs> like when you are obsessed, right? You got your Chris Farley on. Um, but, you know, it's interesting, maybe the character itself, the way that she was so stoic, was helpful in that regard, that you could just say you were staying in character when you yes, were. Yes, it was. People, people who were familiar with my work are like, surprising, Jackie. 
<laughs> but he keep so reserved, so quiet, so quiet. Yeah, but I mean, so that is not over the top. <laughs> so not <Thanks>. loud. <laughs> but I mean, it is interesting as an acting challenge. You are limited in your facial expressions, in the in your vocal inflection, and so does it then become all about intention in getting stuff across? Because you really did were able to express a wide range of feelings to the audience Thank without you. having a wide range of options to you in terms of physicality. Yeah, I mean, it was about great writing and great directing and and great wardrobe and wig and glasses and German, it just, it all helped. <laughs> Each little piece stacks up, yeah. It, it, I thought it was really impressive though because while everyone else around you, was sort of, while everyone is around you is losing right, their heads, right. <laughs> there are you. She's the, the Bavarian still. ballast, if you will. So did you ever have sort of an itch to be like, <laughs> come yeah, on out? Of course, there were moments where I would break out in a take and they're like, uh, you know, like when I, when I leave her. Um, when in episode seven, when she's in the hospital and I walk out on her, and I'm like, you know, I told you you throw this one more time, you know. And Helen Hunt's like, no. <laughs> oh, you never let me have fun, right? Exactly. But yeah, but I was amazed and delighted and surprised at the range of stuff that I got that I got to do. And so since this was limited, and that is an appeal for a lot of actors that you're only going to be working for a certain amount not of me. time, that you're not. <laughs> Well, for some actors, but I mean, was this a character that you wanted to keep exploring? Could we see a Mamacita spinoff, like her backstory? You're so much younger I'm, than yeah. she actually was. It was <laughs> like we could Look learn your whole backstory. Role. She was the maid. I don't know if your viewers might be too young to remember. Right, exactly. So she was whose maid? Well, she was Maud's, Maud's, maid. Maud's maid. Good, Good for you, Sarah. right? She was Maud's maid, and then B. she went was to... maid, right? right? And then she got a temporary layoff. Good time. <laughs> But then it was not as much fun as Maude was. I mean, Esther Roll, I mean, she got her own show, but it was really depressing. I know. Well, they Funny lived in the still. projects, yeah. Yeah. But they did have that, that zippy uh, theme song. And I'm talking about, like, your opening credits. There was so much oh. art to the show in the opening credits and the production design. Those and opening it. credits. And, you know, aside from my name being in them, <laughs> but artfully, the whole thing was done with such taste and such elegance. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I'm telling everybody, I, I, I licked every object on that <laughs> set. I had a, everything. Did you steal anything? Did I, I mean, steal? not steal is a strong word. Did you take a memento? I lift anything? <laughs> Remarkably, no, I did not, which was tough. But they, uh, they let me keep, I requested my glasses and it went up the chain and they let me keep my Mamacita glasses. Oh, that's good. They were very distinctive. Now, you have worked with Ryan previously in The New Normal and now on this. And we know that he likes to work with the same people frequently. So is there hope that you were in a future feud, American Horror Story? What could I say? Let's hope so. All right. Ryan. <laughs> Are you listening? <laughs> All right, that is something that we would like to see. And I want to talk um, a little bit about many of the other things that you've done. I know that difficult people is, uh, is warm in the hearts of many people, and I feel like yes. that's probably more your sensibility personally. Yes, that's, I mean, Julie, I think, and with the aid of a friend of mine, Jody, I mean, they know me and they write, they write it's really written for me. Mm -hmm. Angry, shrewish, <laughs> Jewish, foul mouth, bitter. I don't know where they got those qualities, but that, that's that's what she is. And is that basically what it says on your headshot? Like these angry. Jewish, yeah, the picture Jewish. says that. <laughs> and I want to talk about too, because I just watched her right before this, old Lady Gaga. Oh God, really? So you have done this version of Alejandro. What was the inspiration for that? Well, and if you haven't seen it, go to YouTube and look it's for got, like, old I think Lady several Gaga. Million views. The only thing I've ever done that's gone viral. Um, so funny. It's, it was a, the brainchild of a very talented young, young man named Jake Wilson. And he, he said, you, have you heard of this uh, Lady Gaga Alejandro? I have an idea for old Lady Gaga. And I happened to be in the Adams family at that time playing grandma. So I happened to have the Ben Nye makeup old lady kit. <laughs> so it was just, I had the wig. It was perfect. And, I, and he said he was going to dub the vocal and use old Lady Gaga uh, and use Lady Gaga's vocal. I'm like, Oh no, <laughs> not when you're working with Jackie Hoffman. I'm doing the vocal. 
So, yeah, it's hilarious. And I performed on gay cruises, and I open with that video sometimes. <laughs> That's tremendous. It's so funny. And the guys are there, super hot. I don't know if yes, it's close to Yes, yes. Some of the comments were, get rid of the old lady. Those <laughs> guys are cute. I'm like, oh, come Take a joke. <laughs> Seriously. Although, I mean, that brings up another thing. I mean, it is interesting that you are younger, not only than Mama Sita was, but you're younger than Jessica Lange. And so you're like in this place, in this show, like playing someone older than you yes, actually are. Yes, there was a, a scene that I, one of the, the things that they cut was a moment where I think I peel Jessica up off the floor after she'd been boozing and I take her to bed. And she says, thank you, Mama Sita. You're the mother I've always wanted. And I say, I'm only two years older than you, but okay. <laughs> I know, see, cute, <laughs> cut it. <laughs> we, there needs to be like a whole footage reel of like Mama C the lost Mama Sita moments. Right, exactly. Missing all the things Sita. That we could have, <laughs> all the things that we could have seen. Now I want to talk about the legit stage because that is partially where you, stage. where you come from and you are currently right now starring in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory on Broadway, which is very exciting, playing a super fun character, Mrs. TV, Mrs. who of TV. course is Mike TV's mom. And now he's not obsessed with TV anymore. Now he's obsessed with like an Screens, iPad. Screens, right. They updated it. He's always walking around with headphones. He's got a pad. He's got a phone. He's just so it's kind of, it's kind of perfect. And so this was, were you, had you been a fan of the film? Everyone's a fan of the film, right? I was a fan of the film, and it's one of the few books I actually read in my life. Day. <laughs> uh, I read it and reread it as a child. I loved this book. So great part for you. Oh God, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I grew, I was a TV kid. I grew up on TV. I mean, mm. my, my whole sensibility came from Bugs Bunny, The Honeymooners, Carol Burnett. I mean, that was my, influence and so I, I i was a tv kid a 60s and 70s and 80s tv so you kid. were mike tv basically I, yes <laughs> i was so to be named to have the name mrs tv mm. and to get back together with mr shaman and mr whitman yeah so you've done and some and nice Jack work with brian so i mean a homecoming of sorts because they, yes. they they created new songs for the show they as did. well as using film songs uh, yes, they did. They did, and they and they they wrote a song for me. Each of the parents has a each of the parents and kids has an amazing, distinctly different uh, song about their kid introducing the kid. Right, and why it's all your fault that he has the problems that he has. I'm imagining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Christian Borrell, who oh. excuse me, I have two Tony Awards. Yes. Yeah, is it fun working with him? He seems oh God, to like. Oh God, yeah, he's such. He's a very generous actor, and he like took eye contact with those big comedy-friendly eyeballs, and he's always trying stuff, and he's he's amazing. He's hilariously funny and so talented. Did he's you watch so, Smash? I did. I tried. Did you love Watch Smash or did you hate Watch Smash? <laughs> I kind of. <laughs> First season, like watched it. Second season, you know, stuck with it. It was it's such, it pained me because it was such a great idea that I think wasn't as executed as well as it it could have been. But there were some great songs in that cast, though. Now, if it still was on, you could have been on that next. I want. I was rooting I for Smash so badly. I was offered a bit on Smash, and it shot the same day as a new normal. Oh. And that's what it is for those of you who don't know this business. It's like nothing, 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 everything the same day. And you have to, you know, Sophie's choice. Yeah. Well, you made the right one. <laughs> take, <laughs> take my other NBC show. Take it. But if you hadn't done that, you might not be sitting here today because you started working with Ryan. That's right. That's right. So you made the right choice. And I mean, talk about part of, when it rains, it pours. All of these things in the last few years, Difficult People, Gilmore Girls, Charlie and Chocolate Factory, Feud. I mean, what's next? Huh? After Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? I'm on your, I'm on the red couch. <laughs> You're like up here? Where can it go from here? Present, that's all that matters. LAX, that's what's next. Back to New York. <laughs> all right, we are gonna take some questions from the people out in the world. Really? We are, it's true. How does it work? They type on the machine and you read it? That's exactly how it works. Oh I have goodness. not pre-screened these, so let's see what people let's have to Let's see if say. anyone out there cares enough to ask me a question. That's the first thing. I'm sorry, we have no questions, so. I'm just pretending there's stuff on the screen. 
I uh, know there are multiple questions. Uh, Fiona on Twitter. Asks, Here's one from Ryan Murphy. Why should I consider working with you ever again? We would be so excited if he did that, though. We would make a big case for why he should, because you're so fantastic. All right, Fiona on Twitter wants to know how many vases in total did Jessica Lang have to throw at your head? Uh, they, I think for there were two vase throwing episodes. Mm -hmm. I think six and. Six and seven, mm -hmm. I think, and so yes, there were a total of eight sugar glass vases for. And was she actually throwing them, or was it like a? She was scene? actually throwing them, and then that second one, it was from a hospital bed in a seated position, so that was tough. Mm -hmm. And in episode six, our first AD Marty said, "You know, let let me try this," and then he, you know, you know, I played baseball. <laughs> And it was like with the velocity, Yikes. it was terrifying. So effect. close to my head. And I don't know why they didn't use that take. There was one take where it was like, yeah. Wow. So yes, to answer her question, eight, eight, eight sugar eight glass total. vases. All right, Samantha on Twitter would like to know, which did you find more beneficial in becoming a working actor? Your training at NYU or your training at Second City? Wow, That's they're so question. smart, these people. It's good, right? Well, this why aren't they working at this hour of the day? <laughs> Um, oh my God. Well, here's a waste of $25,000. I'm going to say Second City. <laughs> right, which cost almost but nothing, there was right? stuff, you know, there was stuff that I learned at NYU that wasn't valuable. I'd have to say combo platter because I came to Second City with a foundation that a lot of people there didn't have because they were just improv people right. and they didn't have the acting chop. So the stuff at NYU was invaluable, I gotta say. Right. But Second City was also probably super helpful in terms of meeting people, oh, networking man. in the career yes. that you have now. Yes, and doing and and improvising improvising sketches based on audience suggestions eight times a week. It was like nothing would keep you sharper. Is that something you'd still be interested in doing? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I like, know there are a lot of, there's all the ex Second Cityites have a huge improv community out here and whenever I come over here I'm like, mm. You did your time. Yeah. <laughs> Too fear-based now. Exactly. I'll... No driving, no improv. <laughs> I feel like that list might get longer soon. <laughs> yeah. Alvino on Facebook would like to know, what did you learn about Joan Crawford that you didn't know before? Mm. Let's see, that I think she rented a pair of twins that... Um, Was it about her, I think, uh, just about her relationship mm. with Mama Sita. And I didn't know about this whole Magilla with the Oscars that she, yes. if for some reason you can't accept your award, <laughs> which I'm going to do with then Jessica and Susan, if for it. some reason you can't accept your Emmy. <laughs> I'll be happy to accept it for you. <laughs> You'll be busy yeah, accepting it. Yeah, I can't. Your own. Yes, that that flipped me out. Mm. The buckle flipped me out. The but buckle, the that's right. Taken out. Vey. I did that the whole time I was watching that scene. Like, oh, she got her teeth taken out. Before this, were you, um, and not to pit women against each other, but as just as a fan, were you particularly keen on one or the other, Joan or Betty, just as like a fan of their movies? Wow. I might have been more of a Betty person. Mm. And for no specific reason, you just seen more films or respected her more as an actor? Probably, probably the, the quality of her films. I mean, All About Eve is, is just one of my favorite films ever, so. Gold standard, so good. All right, we are now reaching the lightning round portion of our proceedings where oh, no. prize is double. So basically, I'm just going to ask you five quick questions, and you are going to answer them as quickly as you possibly can. And then we'll totally like get digressed, and it will not go fast, and that will be fine. So we're going to start now with, what was the last show you guys watched? What is? <laughs> you, the, the answers don't have to be in a form, form of a question. question. Okay. okay. What was the last show you binge watched? Crown. Did you love it? Loved. It's coming back, you know. You should be on that it's show. It's coming back. Yeah. I feel like there's a part on that show for you, right? Well, isn't isn't Ryan doing a feud, Charles and Die? Is that what we're thinking of? Yes. Right. Yeah. No, I don't know. Unless there's a maid in Buckingham Palace. <laughs> there probably is. There's probably a bunch. <laughs> I th okay, I see a future here. All right, what show that you love that was a classic that you would love to have been a part of, like have a walk-on role on or something that was before your time? Well, I would love... 
I would have loved to have a Carol Burnett thing of my own, like a variety of old school variety show. Like in the 70s, everybody had a variety show. The Jackie Hoffman show has a good ring to it. Uh, yeah. There's Why can't a lot we do of that Maya, now? Maya Rudolph tried it, Bev Midler was going to try it, and it never, it's just never stuck. No one has, I don't know if the audience is, is there anymore for it. Yeah. I think Neil Patrick Harris even tried it too. That's right. Of, yes. With a very lively, and they were all very lively shows. But yeah, maybe the world is just not in the same place with accepting that stuff anymore. What show do you love that you would want to watch again with somebody else to see them reacting to it? Wow. To see it through their eyes. That I want to see them reacting to it? Yeah. I'm too self-involved. I don't care about other people's <laughs> reactions to anything, unless they're reacting to me. <laughs> That's it. All right. Uh, what was your first acting job, and what did you learn from that that you're still using? <laughs> My first acting job was playing Plain Jane Wayne, The Terror of the Plains, in Shootout at the Trailblazer Saloon at Hershey Park. That's funny. Hershey, Pennsylvania, okay. six shows a day. Bang, bang. Uh, what did I learn from it? Don't do six shows a day. <laughs> <laughs> but you probably learned things about stamina. I did. I was in my 20s, so. <laughs> so yeah. you had it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right, finally. I ate too many Kit Kats. <laughs> Walter White or Tony Soprano? I don't even know who the hell Walter White is. Breaking Bad. Huh? Breaking Bad. Oh, God. Yeah, well, then the, the drug addict. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And finally, this is a trick question that I just came up with. Can you stop the beat? Aww. And what's the answer to that? I, the producer stopped the beat <laughs> five years after it opened, so well. I guess you can. All right. I was so I thought you were going to start singing. You can't stop the beat. No, You're right. you wanted this irrepressible optimism. You're interviewing the wrong gal. <laughs> Excellent point, but I'm so glad I interviewed the right gal. Thank you so much thank for being you. here. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us. And stay tuned for more chats to come.